So how do you take a still image and turn it into this? So over in After Effects, I'm going to right click and create a new composition. You can call this one whatever you like, and then I'm going to set this to be HDTV, and then I'm going to change this to be 30 frames a second, and set our duration to be about five seconds in length, and then hit OK. Now you can use this technique on any of the still images that you have, but if you wanna follow along with exactly what I'm doing, I've linked to this specific photo in the description below. Now I've imported that photo into After Effects and what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that image and just create a new comp from selection. Now I'm just going to rename this by right clicking on it and I'm going to call this one Walls and open it up. Now the first thing we need to do is to actually isolate the different parts of the image. So in this case, we're going to be isolating these walls here on the left and right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to my pen tool now I'm simply just gonna use my pen tool here and draw out a really quick mask, which goes around the outside of this building. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. And the main thing to keep in mind is to just keep drawing points as you move around to refine that edge as much as possible. This video is created by FlatpackEffects.com. A lot goes into learning animations, motion graphics, and ultimately mastering your skills. FlatpackEffects.com gives you access to hundreds of free tutorials, as well as an extensive range of high quality After Effects templates, so you can develop and master your animation skills. Join our growing community of over 20,000 people. Use your link in the description below to check it out today. So now that I have my mask drawn around my first building, I can just refine that mask by coming down to the mask properties. I'm going to add about one pixel of feather and I'm also just going to reduce that expansion by about one pixel. And that's just going to clean up that edge very slightly. So now we've done it for the left hand side of the building, we need to repeat this for the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take that mask and I'm just going to hit invert. That's going to reveal the other side of this building here. So I'm going to come up here and grab my pen tool and then we can start that process again. Now when I get to this light here, because this is part of the building, I'm just going to isolate this by drawing a quick mask which runs around the outside of it. Now if you make a mistake at any point, you can just readjust any of those mask points by clicking and dragging them around the screen. Or you can simply use Control Z on the keyboard to just go back. So I'm trying to get it as close as I can to the edge of the building here as I move through. Okay, so now that I have my second mask drawn, what we're going to do is come back down here and actually turn off that first invert to reveal that second mask. Then I can come down here and actually refine that mask as well. Then if I come down here and actually turn on the transparency, you can see we have a really clean cutout of those two buildings on both sides. So now we're ready to actually isolate the background and we don't need the walls in our shot. Now an easy way to do this is to actually just come over here and duplicate our wall image. Then I'm just going to right click and rename this to background. And now what we want to do is actually subtract those two masks out of this shot so we just end up with the background. So what I'm going to do is actually just subtract this and this is what we end up with here. We end up with that image with those two buildings that are masked out. Now the hard part to this effect is that we actually need to see part of the image that wasn't originally there. So as you can imagine the camera moving through the shot, we actually need to see more than what the background is actually showing us. So that's where we need to actually come over here and use our clone stamp tool to actually add that additional part back in. Now you have the option of doing this either in Photoshop or After Effects. Now if you prefer Photoshop, you can use the exact same techniques and you'll save your image out as a PNG and then import it back into After Effects. But we're going to do this one all inside of After Effects so I can show you exactly how it's done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to my clone stamp tool and then I'm going to double click on my background layer to open the image image up. Then on the right hand side you'll notice all the brush tools should appear. If they don't you can come up to window 
and make sure brushes is selected. And what I'm going to do is lift the hardness up to about 20% and then I can control the actual size or the diameter of the clone stamp tool. Now the first part is I need to actually select where I want the clone stamp to actually start. So if I hold Option or Alt on the keyboard, I can actually select where I want it to start. So I'm going to select this part here. And if I line it up with that edge of that line, I can then move across here and actually use that as a reference point so that it all lines up when I click through. And you can see we end up with that straight line moving through. So what we're doing there is we're actually maintaining the perspective of that image as we're copying it across. So that's really important when you're moving through the image. Now all I'm trying to do here is just copy what's here across into the dark part of my image. And the key is here to keep messing around with the size of that tool. Now this technique is one of those things, the longer you spend doing it, the better your results are going to be. Now I'm just going to speed ahead here to show you how I've actually done this image. But the key is we don't actually have to do the entire width. We only need to expand it very slightly because in the final product, I'm going to show you how to expand it so that we actually use more of the original part of that image. So now that I've finished that, if I come down here and turn this on and off, you can see how much we've actually expanded the image by. So now we have all of our images, we're now ready to put them all together in one comp. So what I'm going to do is come down to my 3D composition. I'm going to select my background and walls comp and drag them straight in. Now I want to position my background layer obviously on the back and I want to position my walls layer in the foreground or on top of my composition. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually right click and create a new camera. Now I can set this to be 35 millimeters and then hit OK. And then I can come down here and make sure that both of these layers are 3D layers. Now the other thing I need to do is actually reposition these in 3D space. So I'm going to change my view from active camera to the top. And if I zoom out here, you can see our camera is positioned here and then we have our two layers positioned here. Now with my background layer selected, I'm going to drag this one back in 3D space and I'm also going to drag our walls layer slightly back as well. Now if I switch my view back to the active camera, you can see that we've repositioned them in 3D space. So now what we need to do is actually take both those layers and hit S on the keyboard to bring up the scale function. And I'm simply just going to scale up my background image and at the same time, I'm going to shrink down my walls layer. Now, the other thing I need to do is actually select both these layers and I'm going to drag them up in the Y axis so that they line up with the bottom of my composition. So now we're ready to actually animate our 3D camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my 3D camera and I'm just going to use this drop down to make two keyframes for the point of interest and the position. Then I'm going to select my camera tool by hitting C on the keyboard. I can rotate through the different tools. And at my starting keyframe, I'm just going to reposition my camera slightly so we're looking off to the left here. Then I'm going to move down on the timeline and I'm going to move my camera forward. And at the same time, I'm going to change the perspective to a different point of view. Now if I select all those keyframes and then I right click, I can make them easy ease. And when I play through this, you can see that we actually have the finished effect. Now another little cool effect that I can add here is to add some fake rain or snow falling in my scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and create a new solid here. You can name this whatever you like and then hit OK. I'm just going to drag this underneath my camera layer here. And what I want to do is actually add the effect CC Rainfall. So with that layer selected, I'm going to come up to effect, down to simulation, and then add the CC Rainfall. Now if I uncheck this, it'll immediately reveal our background image. I'm also going to make this a 3D layer and scale this up. Then I can come back up to the effect controls and actually adjust a few of those settings. So the size I'm going to set to be about 15. The scene depth, I want to drag this up to about 10,000 and I'm going to drop the drops number down to about 1,000. 
Then the actual speed, I'm going to drop this down to around 300 because I don't want it to be falling that fast. And then we have that finished effect. Now from this point, it's just a matter of going back through and then readjusting any of those settings that you need to in order to get the finished effect that you need. So if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more After Effects tutorials over at flatpackeffects.com. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.